Hey. All right, Pat. You done missed a lot of the show, but we're glad you're here now. Yes. Yeah. You, you, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, that God is, you know, if God is in you, it will show up in you. Yes. Now, now I'm trying to figure out, now I done pushed the button and, and did, did you see it just start playing? Right, Patrick yeah. Wafer. Yeah. This is for you today, Mass Choirs. Yes, yes, yes. And, and you know, we get ready to uh, do a great interview with yeah. Patrick, with another Patrick, but with we're going to ask Patrick. him to turn his camera a long way because yeah. we need to make sure they get to see all of his the essence of his, of his blessing. Glory, yes. yes, yes, yes. So, Robert O'Dean, I got a, um, and this is, I want people to understand how we responsive we are to our listeners. Yes. Patrick Wafer, Pastor Patrick yes. Wafer, uh, reached out and said he would love to have a day with mass, mass choirs. choirs. Yes. And I, I said, Robert Earl. All, that's all you had to do was ask. You know, and, 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 and y'all ask a lot, but when it makes sense. Come on. We just go on to it. And so we, we had soloist days we've had different days yes but patrick wafer said that he wanted to have a mass choir day so pastor patrick wafer and he's just waking up yeah but we thank god for him yes uh that he has <laughs> decided to come aboard yes. this morning because yes. uh after this great interview with this great great artist another and man patrick. of god another, another patrick, patrick yeah. you know then we're gonna get back to it first of all we'll hear his song yes you know what i'm saying uh uh so we just want everybody to know right. that we're responsive to our listeners. Yes, and we thank you all for tuning in yes, yes. yesterday for the great interview of the reunion of the group Adoration and Praise. That Demita, was ridiculous. Demita Hatton and Margarita. Clarita. Yeah. I mean, not Clarita. Margarita. But Margarita, Demita. Uh, Demita. Pam and Doty. Pam and Doty. Yeah. Amazing reunion. Okay, now, now I just want to say this. You know, uh, I don't want to start off the interview any other way, mm -hmm. um, but uh, this next dude that you're going to introduce mm -hmm. Um, I'm checking him out, and it, it, it looked like this brother got so much swag. Uh, Look at that, you, you know, that's what I'm saying. That I'm gonna just have to the uh, uh, walls sit back. And yeah, all of that glory. you know, he, I'm gonna start calling him Big Money Lundy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Who, who who do we got with us today, brother? This gentleman is no newcomer to gospel music. He has been keeping choir music alive, my kind of person, mm -hmm. and he's none other than the world renowned. Patrick Lundy, welcome to the Wake Up Morning Show with Dr. LT and Robert Earl Dean. Man, it's so great to be here with you guys. I'm apologize for being late. Oh, no I'm problem. Here. You, you here? I'm excited about it. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, we want you to know uh, uh, we didn't see you as late. We was talking to the other Patrick. Other Patrick. You thought we was talking about you know, uh, the other Patrick because you know right. uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Bishop Pastor Patrick Wafer in yeah. San Diego said I want to hear choir man. You know, so yeah. we. We, we had to let him know that we we heard his it's his cry. cry. Yes. Now 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 now, now doctor, uh, I'm just gonna start off by saying, you know, big money, Lundy. Uh, 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 <laughs> I'm really I'm really liking the digs that you in from from the sweat the sweatsuit to the office. Yes. Where are you at in in your 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 mansion? <laughs> Well, first of all, I'm I'm loving that you're speaking all this into existence. I, I, I yeah, big yeah. money, Lundy. Let's right. keep, keep saying it, and maybe yeah. one day it's gonna happen. Yeah. But uh, no, man, I'm I'm chilling here at my house, man. I'm in Maryland, um, mm -hmm. uh, Fort Washington, Maryland. I live about 20 minutes right outside of Washington D.C. Okay. Right. Yeah. But 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 he's hailed from Georgia. Yeah, I'm, I, I grew up in Georgia, man. I grew up in a small town called Thomasville, Georgia. It's about four hours south of Atlanta. So so let me ask you a question. This 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 question. Is there really a Willa Coochie, Georgia? <laughs> uh I'm not familiar with it, but probably. Okay. Because you know, Cedric the Entertainer always are like, yes, I'm from Willa Coochie, Georgia. I'm like, where is Willa Coochie, Georgia at? I gotta look uh, that up. Man, it's a big state. I, I tell you, I grew up in Georgia, but I've never, I don't think I've heard of Willacoochee, <laughs> but I'm sure. <laughs> with, that, with such an entertainer, you just don't know, praise yeah. the Lord. Right. So right. I think he made it up. It's probably you, somewhere near Atlanta. Everything's right. near yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so what, what moved you to where you are now coming from Georgia? 
Well, I, I went to school at Howard. That's that's the main reason that brought me to Washington D.C. Wow, yeah, prestigious so, HBCU. Uh, yeah, I wanted to. Um, I always knew that I wanted to um, get out of Georgia. It's not that I had a bad experience growing up mm-hmm. or anything like that, mm-hmm. but I always kind of knew that my life was way kind of past where I was, and I wanted to go to a black school, and I decided to go to Howard. So let let me ask you this question: Did you pledge when you was at Howard? I did not. And I'm going to tell you, the only reason I didn't do it was because the fret that I would have pledged, they were suspended. Okay. You know, back in the day, um, hazing was real big. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, and um, every fraternity on my on Howard's campus when I was in school was suspended except for the Sigmas. Wow. Wow. So, every so. Day. Yeah, it's not too late. You could go grad chapter if you I'm want. I'm thinking to. about it too. Uh, but I do want to say this: How do you feel uh, coming from the university that has produced the first African American vice president? Man, we everybody that's been to Howard, everybody that's there now, we are so proud, man. Just extremely proud. Um, Kamala Harris. Uh, I think she graduated a few years before I got there, but she is tremendous, man. And we celebrate her. We celebrate what she's standing for. And I'm excited really for, you know, our young women who can see a a role model right there in front of their eyes Mm -hmm. that they, the ceiling, the glass ceiling is kind of shattered at this point. There's nothing that they can do. And guys too. And, and, and boys. Yeah. Yeah. We we, we see an African-American in this position. Now, 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 Big Money Lundy, I want you to know, I like that. It sounds real good, Big Money Lundy, don't it? <laughs> but uh, uh, our listeners, they, they are researchers and everything like that. So uh, we have officially found out that there is a city in Georgia called Willacoochee, Georgia. It is in the city of uh, Atkinson County. Atkinson County. Atkinson County. Atkinson County. County in population about 1,391 people. You know, so it's unincorporated for the most part, but pretty right, much right. so. Pretty much so. Uh, uh, pretty much. And, and it's funny because um, the reason why I share all this with you is because our listeners get very, very excited about the legends and gospel. And so, uh, as we begin to ask you questions, the listeners going to be asking questions at the same time, and we're going to forward it to you. We're going to say, oh, "Okay, Lord. now, brother." So, if we look that we so anointed and we just see. That's only because the listeners is pitching us questions, too. Gotcha. Right. All right. Robert so, so my question to you is, let's talk about the culture of Howard University, because Howard University has produced so many prestigious African-Americans that we see, mm-hmm. the Felicia Rashads, the Debbie mm-hmm. Allens, the Roberta Flax, mm-hmm. and the Richard Smallwoods and Twinkie Clark Terrell. Richard Smallwood. Yeah. Yes, and Angela Wimbush. Let's talk about being in that area because you were music. Yeah, you know, um, our finance department has put out so many um, grades down through the years, and I just feel honored that I was able to go to Howard and um, be a part of the legacy, so to speak. I mean, we're really proud. All all the people that you just um, named, man, they are doing tremendous things and have been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of stand on their shoulders, you know what I mean, trying to uh, make sure that we project that same excellence in what we do. Um, Stephen Hurd went to Howard University as well. Really? Wow, I didn't yeah, know that. We were classmates at the same time. And, the worship leader, Stephen yeah. Hurd. So, so let me ask you a question. Uh, this is a rumor, and I want you to clear it up right now. It's always rumors. You okay. know, uh, I had a, I heard a rumor was is that you and uh, Sean P. Diddy Combs back in the day at Howard had a dance off, and you shouted him off the stage. Yep, that's a rumor. <laughs> yeah. Right. Be- because because Sean Puffy Combs did go to Howard. He ran yeah. track for Howard University. Yeah. He did go to Howard, and he was there around the time I was there. Yeah, he was there. But, yeah, that would definitely be a rumor. Sorry. <laughs> so how did you transition and start your group from college? Did it start in college? Did it, was it after college? How did you start mm-hmm. your group? It kind of started, um, I guess, in my mind in college. And the reason being is that I was a part of the Howard Gospel Choir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Um, I was the assistant director under Aphelius Paul Gatlin III. And I was intrigued with how he was able to mold and get voices to blend the way he did. I mean, it was incredible. And 
uh, the fact that we did all different types of music. We just didn't do gospel. We did anthems and spirituals and hymns. We did the whole gamut. Mm -hmm. um, praise and worship wasn't so popular back then, so I won't call that out as a part of what we did. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that started, that was like the catalyst that 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 really um, motivated me to want to start my own community choir. And um, so I just got some of the cream of the crop of the city, man. I, I would do weddings and I would hear soloists. I'd do some funerals and I'd hear soloists, mm -hmm. and even in, in the churches that I played for. So I wouldn't just kind of ask people to come to rehearsal mm -hmm. and the rest is history, man. So tell me, when did you start in music? What, what was the catalyst that actually got you in music and at what age? Well, um, my parents, um, if they were allowed to answer that question, they would say when I was about three or four years old, mm -hmm. <laughs> because they noticed early on that I was rhythming. I mean, I would go in the kitchen, get the pots and pans, and I'd be doing my little thing. And then from there, I, I got a little play piano, a little kitty piano when I was growing up, and then graduated to the medium size, and then got a real piano. And it was at that point that I was like, I'm not taking piano lessons. I'm done with music. And my mom said, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> we just bought you this piano. You will continue taking lessons. Right. And so, yeah, from early on, man, and even in my church, uh, First Missionary Baptist Church in Thomasville, Georgia, um, you know, I've, I've said this several times in interviews, but my pastor was a Morehouse graduate. He was part of the Morehouse Glee Club. The church organist had an opportunity to go to Metropolitan Opera. So I heard that classical sound. From wow. Earth. The church, my church pianist and the minister of music was a piano major at Fort Valley State College in Georgia. So I heard a lot of, um, I was surrounded with musical excellence from mm -hmm. an early age, man. And it just kind of inspired me. Okay. Right. So the influence around you had a lot to do with your development as, as an artist yourself. Absolutely. And I don't know why I forgot to mention that I was an original member of the Georgia Mass Choir. Oh, under wow. James Big Nun and Milton Bigham. <laughs> What? Yeah, I was in the original group. There were about 600 of us from that first recording session uh, in Augusta, Georgia. Yeah, so I grew up under some really, really, really awesome musicians, man. And Legendary. Just them, yeah. Well, now how was that experience, being in a mass choir of that magnitude? Because you guys were on the forefront on Savoy for a long time. A long time. It was it was incredible because again you know the fellowship of meeting different singers from across the state of Georgia, mm -hmm. Atlanta, Augusta, every, I mean just everywhere, Macon, Georgia, and we would have rehearsals in those different cities, and we were excited you know to meet up with Milton Bigham who would fly down from New York mm -hmm. to rehearse us, rehearse us, and then James Big Nine came from Atlanta, so yeah man just to watch them put together a record because we do it on a weekend. I mean we would have rehearsals prior to it. But we come together on a Friday night, uh, rehearse half the night, get back up early Saturday, rehearse until the recording session, and then do the recording session that night. So I learned a, a lot under their leadership. Wow, how amazing. I'm just sitting up here because James Bignan is, is a great singer, and we haven't heard much from him lately, but those that are listening, he has put out some hits with choirs. And, oh, yeah. I, and I'm a choir man. Choir music. I'm a choir man. Now, how did you stay with choirs and not ensembles? <laughs> well, I'm pl pr um, I am currently with ensembles because, as you know, I mean, in this pandemic, right. even in our churches, we've been advised not to have more than, you know, a certain amount of people. Right. So it's been interesting. But for me, man, there's just nothing like that sound Come of, on. Of, choir, of singers. <sighs> I mean, like... 20, 25, 30, 40, mm -hmm. 50, 70, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like that coming at you. There's nothing. It's like a big praise and worship team, particularly if you got singers that, that know how to worship and that are grateful to be up there singing. It's it's a sound that is, there's nothing like it. Yes. There's nothing like it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so uh, a pastor, I'm, I'm getting ready to give you another title uh, um, see. here. You know, big, big, big money. Now we're going to go to pastor. Um, yeah. When you, I know that a lot of times churches started uh, going away from choirs because the amount of work that it took to mm -hmm. uh, uh, keep Dang. this big group of people together on one accord. Mm -hmm. How do you keep your group together and how do you pastor them through even this time of pandemic? 
Yeah, well, I mean, I try to keep it fresh. My The rehearsals, um, you know, when we just come together to fellowship and to learn music, I, I think um, it's important that you keep your rehearsals fresh. Don't let them come in and feel like, oh, we're going to do it this way this time. Mm -hmm. And the same way every, you know, I might, instead of having uh, one person lead us in prayer, I may ask the entire room to pray, even if it's one sentence, um, or give a favorite scripture. Mm -hmm. We definitely share testimonies mm -hmm. because to me, those testimonies and hearing those testimonies mm -hmm. show up in the music. So when you're saying that God is a way maker and in rehearsal, somebody has, has testified about walking away from a, a car accident and show pictures of the car all crumbled up or crushed up or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and there's not a scratch or when somebody testifies about God being a healer, yes. all that stuff shows up in the music. So it's important to me to get everybody uh, as much as possible sharing in the rehearsal and feeling like they are part of it. In this pandemic, man, of course, Zoom, thank God, uh, StreamYard and some of these other platforms have allowed us to come together and we've shared. It's kind of hard to do a rehearsal on zoom but it's right. just good to see everybody's face because mm -hmm. now we're we're talking about a whole year that we have not been together so it's just good to have that kind of fellowship even in the pandemic on zoom okay. so what 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 um encouraged you to record because there's a difference in being a minister music of a church or a choir director but to take it mm -hmm. to the next level as an artist is a whole different ball game what encouraged you or what prompted you to take it to the next level and to record with your ministers of, of music? Yeah, that's an interesting question because I never started the group to record. I never started the group to be a recording artist. I've, I've just always loved the choir sound. Yes. And I just always wanted to have a group of singers who were serious about music ministry, a group of singers who could, you know, had that gift um, naturally, mm -hmm. but they also were aware that in order to have true ministry, they had to have God's anointing on top of it. Come so, on, man. So I always wanted that group. So when we did our, when we first started out, people would say, we do our concerts around the city. Where's your seat? Where's your, well, at that point, where's your cassette? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> where, where, where's your tape? And we'd be like, we don't, we don't have a tape. And so I decided, I said, I'll tell you what, we're going to do um, a demo. We'll just do like a few songs and we'll just kind of share it as we do concerts. And as at that point, I wasn't really doing too much writing myself. So I called out to people that I had worked with, like a Margaret DeRoe, uh, a Milton Bigham, um, just a lot of different artists, um, uh, Byron Cage. Wow. And so the demo became a full cassette or a full record at, at that point. And then not only did it become a full record, it, we got nominated for Stellar. We sing the power. And I found... Yeah, I found that out by accident. I was sitting on the organ playing at my church, Ebenezer AME, at that point. Mm -hmm. And the pastor was like, let's give a shout out to Patrick Lundy and the Ministers of Music who just got nominated. And I was like, what? I, I had not even heard it. So that's kind of how we got, um, I guess, thrust into the industry side of everything. And that, that was the start. So, so let me ask you this. Um, how... If if I I really 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 feel led that I needed to uh, uh, be under your tutelage and sing in your group, yes. How do you get to? Uh, do you have auditions? Do you when when do you select new members for your group? And how? Well, typically it would be twice a year. Uh, we kind of follow the academic school year where we have like a fall semester mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. starting in September and going through December. And then we start back up in December and go through mm -hmm. um, June or something like that. So we, we really do maybe like two auditions a year. And um, so that's how I select. And, and generally the choir members, they all, they know other singers is that kind of thing. Right. It's not that we put it out on the radio or because again, I want that family atmosphere and i think that's the reason we've been together for i guess at this point 27 years almost so wow because i, I I'm, I'm real big on everybody getting along mm -hmm. and no big eyes and little you's and right you know how the you know how church you know how choirs can be with mm -hmm. the egos I yes can sing mm -hmm. and i can sing better than you mm -hmm. we don't have that 
praise God. We, we just don't, everybody's grateful. Because I, I speak about that. You know, the fact that you can get up in front of people mm -hmm. and share your gift is a tremendous opportunity. And so you shouldn't be arrogant about it at all. There's nothing to be arrogant about. Because it see, comes so from God. Kind of, yeah. It comes from God anyway. See, see, and that's it why. It comes from God. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Like, nobody gave anybody a gift. No. Yeah. So then why are you going to be mad with God for God being God? Yeah. yeah. See, see, that's why they wouldn't let me direct the choir. Or uh, sing. Uh, uh, or, or sing. Or, or sing. But praise God. Uh, um, uh, but they let me sing in the choir, but right they let the me choir. direct. They let you leave. Be, be, because I'd have been sitting up there like, uh, I got like 20 hit girls up in here. <laughs> and, and I'm like, your turn. <laughs> but <laughs> let, right. let, let, let me ask you this. In this time of pandemic and social unrest, and you know, and you live in that area where we're seeing a lot of energy, um, uh, what is your message that you are sending out um, to your ministry, but also to the young brothers and sisters that are looking for answers? Well, I think this entire pandemic um, has sounded the alarm um, that we all need to just st um, step back mm -hmm. and reset. Um, so it's not about just getting a rest from everything, but it's about a reset, really getting in the face of God. Uh, really honing in on your prayer life and your time of study because God is is basically saying, I am God, I am sovereign, and mm -hmm. I'm going to do what I want to do. And it, you really need to just come into my will. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the that has been the lesson for me. I think that's the overall lesson is for us to reset and really, really attune our lives to uh, the Holy Spirit to hear what he has to say. And I think that um, just like if you've lived long enough with God, you know, even though we're in a pandemic and, mm -hmm. and, and so many people have have died and, and gone on or so many people are without jobs yes. or, mm -hmm. or just going through a lot, we know that the sun is going to shine again because that's yes. just how God works. Yes. You, know, you never stay. This is a comma. This is not a period Come on. in your mm -hmm. life. Um, God is going to allow us to get back on track, so to speak, and we're going to see the sun shine again. And so that's what I would say to everybody. Just kind of hold, you got to hold out. You have to hold out. You cannot give up in the middle of this pandemic, or you cannot give up in the middle of any crisis in your life. You have to let God work it out because he will do that for you. Yes. And your friend Everett Drake from Bobby Jones says, great interview. Congratulations on your new music and blessings on your ministry. Thank you, Everett. Thank you. Yeah, he's just always encouraging everybody. So I, I just my, my next question, and, and and I know Robert got a couple, but this is my last question I'm gonna ask you. This is on the fashion situation. Uh, gators or sneakers? Sneakers. Okay. <laughs> All right, Robert. I just had to ask. That. Particularly now, like I I'm worn a suit maybe three. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm, give me a sweatsuit and some sneakers. I'm good to go. Right. Now, how'd you yeah. get connected with my big brother, Cedric Thompson? Uh, years ago, uh, we had an opportunity to work with Donna Lawrence. And Donna Lawrence was producing Betty Griffith Keller. What? Yeah, he 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 put to, he was producing a CD for her. I'm not even sure if it came out. I hate to say that. But we, he did a CD for her, and she recorded right here in the Washington, D.C. area. And we were the choir that backed her up. And so Cedric was the keyboardist, and we just kind of jailed from, from day one. And I told him that I wanted to uh, take our music up to the next level. Yes. And he said, yeah, man, sure, let's, you know, let's, let's talk about that. And what, maybe six or seven CDs later, because he's produced everything we've done down through the, through the years for the most part. Wow. He's a great man. He's a great man. Uh, he's a great producer. Yes. Uh, even even on this latest project, you know, he his wife did a song that I wrote called "Cover Me." I mean, wow, just some talented people. Yes, and good good people, like you said. Um, yeah, it's it's funny that you mentioned Betty Griffith Keller. I just talked to her the other day. She called me two days ago. Oh yeah. Yes, she's in Pasadena, California, and her church mm -hmm. choir just did an album that we've played the single on this show as well. She's a great person, man. I mean, like just outside of singing, um, I had an opportunity to tour with her in Germany. She was working with the college choir there and she called me to go with them. And I went was so elated and wrote a song on that in 
while we were there in Germany that we've um, recorded since. But yeah, she's a great person. And she actually reached out to me a few days for my birthday as well. So it was good hearing from her. Wow. So who yeah. have you not worked with that you would desire? Your wish list. What artist would you want to work with? Ooh. That's hard. I mean, I've never uh, worked with Kurt Franklin. I mean, we've been on stage together in different venues. But to just watch him produce, I would love to sit and just kind of be in the studio and watch how they put that together. Um, I've done same thing, done a lot of work with Kurt Carr, but not in the studio. See, I think that's where you learn when you kind of right. put right. your projects together. So I would love to, to work with those two. Um, who else? I don't know. There's so many, so many artists that are just doing it. You know what I mean? Anthony Brown is right here in the city. I need to go and get in the studio with him because he can really put together uh, some great music as well. Yes, yes. Well, man, we certainly thank you for this for this interview. It's been really enlightening. I, I like that you are a choir man. I'm, I'm a choir person, oh, yeah. too. And, and there's nothing like traditional music. Y'all, everything is good and gospel, as long as it talks about Jesus Christ. <laughs> But there's nothing like the choir. I remember as a kid in the black church, how that choir would sing so anointedly that sometimes mm -hmm. there would not be a preach word. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and like you say, I mean, it's very possible to sing at that level. And I think our choir directors, we have to uh, encourage our singers to to really like, you know, just get on one accord and go for it. And I'm excited about like the first concert, the first church service, full service, I should say, after, you know, when we get to this pandemic, I can't even imagine. And the ministers, we're already talking about, like, what's going to be the first song? And will we be standing after the first song? Right. I mean, because we, it's so surreal. I mean, right now we're kind of, we're in it, you know what I mean? But once we get past it and through it, and stand up in front of in, in God's church and proclaim to the people. I think that's going to be a grand moment for everybody. It's going to be a, an anointed time. Yes. Now, now, now Professor, that's I think that's title number three. <laughs> that's number three. Father, you Son, know, Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, Professor, you know the one thing, and and I, I've, I've been watching you throughout the interview, and it's really weird, kind of like this mannerisms of almost. I feel like I'm talking to Richard Smallwood at the same time, because oh yeah, uh, yeah, because you you you. you you are, are so um, precise in in how you're how you're doing this interview. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My question to you is um, that first service back. How do you prepare your choir members who have not sung all out for quite some time? How are you preparing them to have enough stamina to do the oh, whole yes. service? Oh yes, you're right. And I'm going to have to approach it, I guess, like uh, I would if I were in the gym. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You have to do a few repetitions. You know, you got to warm up. Yes. You can't just jump right back into, you know, mm -mm. full out squalling. It's going to take a little time. Yeah. But um, but I think it's going to I think it's going to work out because they're going to be so eager to sing, too. So you got to think about it. Most people have not sung in a, a year. For real. And so I think it's just going to work out. I'm going to push, but they're going to be open to the training, so to speak. You know what I mean? And so I'm just going to push and push. And then after that two hour rehearsal, my goal is for them to get in their car, go home and fall out. I mean, to yeah. the point, not even get in the shower because the rehearsal was so intense mm -hmm. and it was, you know, we pushed like we were in the weight room. Well, I just want you to know that if you, if you need to bring me in as a consultant uh, uh, uh -huh. to help you out during this time, I am the, I am a professional shusher. <laughs> So, uh, uh, like when, James Cleveland, like, like, so, I was about to say, did you study under James Cleveland? He, you know, he was my mentor, <laughs> okay. Right. And so, gotcha. you know, I could come in and at any <laughs> moment I could shh, say, it, 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 it's anointed, brother, <laughs> right? right. To, to, shh, to, man, to, to right. him, to him, it is so. Praise God, praise we'll go, the Lord, we'll, we'll go with that, uh, all right, his own reality. right? Right, right, right. <laughs> so, my last question, Allen and Allen Music Company. Oh, music group. Is that the Allen mm -hmm. Allen Jazz Duel? It is. Yeah, mm -hmm. at, at some point they decided to, you know, they had done a, a whole run with their uh, music in terms of being a duo. Successfully. And so they mm -hmm, so they decided to start uh, a record label. And um, we had great relationship with them. In fact, my business manager 
was very instrumental in helping them kind of do what they do as we know them as Allen and Allen. Oh, yes. And we would go to their church, um, to um, Allen Wiggins Church several times, the Hope there in Orlando, Florida. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it, it, that was a natural kind of bond to the Lord allowed to come together. And so we were with them for a few years. Wow, that's amazing. I, I never knew that they had a label because I was wondering yeah. how they were doing. And now we know. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, yep, yep. Big Money Lundy, uh, <laughs> Pastor Lundy, Professor Lundy, could yeah. you share and introduce to the world this hot, hot new track it, that it you put hot. out? Uh, you know, it's hotter hot. than fish grease. Yeah, can you hot. share it? Tell us how they can find you, connect with you, book you, and then introduce yourself. Okay, well, I mean, this song, um, I think most of your listeners are familiar with the um, Thomas Dorsey uh, convention, the Choirs and Choruses convention. Uh-huh. And, and I go every every year, the Ministers of Music, we, we've gone so many times as well. But this one time, I was there, and their young adult choir was doing this song. And I thought, that's a... That's a that's a hit song to me. Now not only because of uh the way it sounds with the the musicianship of it, the band was cranking, but the words, the words are traditional and it's an it, it's they're just catchy. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about, know too much about him. Come on songs. through. And that particular night when they were doing that song, uh the Clark sisters were in the audience, a lot of other artists were there, and the whole everybody in the room was standing up rocking to this song and so i went to the composer and i said hey jesse man can can do you think the ministers of music can do this song he's like sure man i, I think so and i had gone to somebody else and they were like well y'all, you know y'all a little old this song right here you know it's got some kick to it y'all y'all not gonna be able to hang with this um in terms of the energy but you'll sound good <laughs> so that was that was your challenge that was kind of how we got got introduced to the song mm-hmm. And so we put it on the project, man, and, and we decided that this song should be the single because of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. You know, people were doubting, wondering yes. how they're going to come through. Come blah, on. Blah, blah, blah. So we just decided we're going to throw this message out there, Waymaker. And then, you know, summertime came last year, and we like, we need something rocking on the airwaves. Yes. And that's how we chose this particular song, Waymaker, as our single. Well, it's being played in Nashville, too, with Lady Shantae. A close friend of mine, yeah. she told me she was playing it as well. Well, tell Lady Shantae, thank you, because we need all the spins we can get. And we, we just want to get our ministry across the country, man. We really do. Yes. The world, as a matter of fact. Yes. And how can they find you? So uh, we have a webpage, plundymom.org. You can just go straight to that. And then, of course, if you want to download the CD, you can go to Apple Music, Amazon, iTunes. It's all over social uh, social platforms. And we're encouraging everybody to do so because um, there's some other songs on there, too. You know, B. Michael McKay wrote a song called My Way. Wow. Um, like I said, I wrote a song during the pandemic that we did not do live, but it's on the project. It's called Cover Me, and it's a prayer. And LeJune Thompson is leading that. So Ooh, Jesus, please go out and download the CD. I, I, I think it's going to really bless you. I really do. Beverly yes, Crawford is on it as well. Yeah, oh, my God. You got it loaded. Well, <laughs> so yeah, check it out. Yeah, I wrote a song years ago called "Bless His Name," and I just brought it back, and she lights it up. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard from none other than Big Money Pastor <laughs> uh, Professor Patrick Lundy, Lundy and, and the Ministers going of Music to introduce this new song, and it is called Way Waymaker. Maker. Right here on God Radio One dot com. Hallelujah.
That choir is singing, Jesus. Jesus. Woo. My God, that was amazing. Come on, New Orleans Gospel Soul Children and Thomas Whitfield. Yes. Drink it. Ha, 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 ha. Children of, of uh, New Orleans. Ah, oh, come on through, church. Y'all know this is my song. What's up, Ronald?
Yolanda was 16 years old. She's 59 now. 59. She's 59. True. You don't see why she didn't old. And this is Chicago Mass featuring Lemmy Battle. Miss Lemmy. Sing Lemmy. Bring back the tambourine.
Our music man it puts a pep in your step. And this is a Al, this is a Alabama, Alabama State, State, State Choir. One of the Kojic State Choirs. It's a good one too.
get another dip. Yes, I got another dip. Yeah. Now that the fountain. Me too, I got happy too. Yes, I got another. Can I have a tamarind? to what she was and knock her down and fall out with her. This is Mass Choir, Leonard Gibbons, who I sung with when I was in college down there.
Good stuff. This is the Little Rock Mass Choir. That's good, sing it, Leonard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arkansas? Yeah. All right, Keith Pringle, the Pentecost Community Choir.
There you have it right there. By request, this was the Mass Choir Celebration on Throwback Thursday. This is your guy, Dr. LT. And Robert L. Dean. It was amazing. Well, Robert L. Dean, we got many more songs that we have in the dossier for the choir. So we're going to bring this back once again next Thursday. We'll look at trying to finish this it. up. Let's do it. And um, on tomorrow, on tomorrow, on tomorrow. It's a big day here at GLD Radio. It's a good day. What's going to be happening, brother? We are... Bringing together for a reunion, Donald Taylor and the L.A. Mass Choir. Very excited about this. Here's another great reunion. We had adora uh, we had uh, adoration and praise, praise on yesterday and on on tomorrow. We have none other than the legendary choir, yes, the L.A. LA Mass, Mass Choir, so many under hits. the direction of of Donald Taylor. So we want you to tell a friend, let's pack it out. Let's have over three, 400 folks tabled in on tomorrow. Share it with a friend. We're going to continue to give you great gospel music. I'm going to leave you off with this one right here. This is uh, the greatest of all times, the Tennessee Mass Choir, right here on GLD Radio 1. Y'all have a blessed day.
Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Be blessed. Have an amazing Thursday. God bless you. Yeah, yeah.